Eddie G. TV. 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 All right. Yo, this is Eddie G. TV. We got Kyle Morrison. What's up? Here. Yo, so I, I, I hear you like smoking weed. Yeah, I like to smoke weed. I've been smoking weed since I was 13. I started early, too. Uh, I started like 11. Started stealing my mom's roaches. That's how, that's how I got into it. I was curious. I was <laughs> like, how come I always got to leave the room when, when, they, when they're doing this? Like, what's this thing they're doing? You know, so I got curious. So I was like, all right, let me let me dip into these roaches. And like, what I did with too is like, the roaches didn't have any filters on them, so I just put it like I didn't know what I was doing. I just put them like all all in a row in the paper and rolled it like that and and tried to smoke it. And I was like, this ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the first time I remember smoking weed, I was thirteen. I was just getting ready for school, and I'm cooking food. And I look out on the back patio, and I see my mom sitting there, and there's smoke coming up from her, and I'm like, yeah. so I open the slide door, like, hey, mom, what are you doing out here smoking? She says, oh, once in a while, I like to have a cigarette. I'm like, mom, that's not a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been smoking yeah. all the time ever since then. <sighs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I tried smoking cigarettes when I was younger, but I just I wasn't into it. I was, like, more into the green, definitely. So, um, but, like, uh... You're like a big uh, activist for this, like, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been doing activism since about 2012. Um, it started when I got my grow license, MMAR grow license. And, uh, so I, I'd started growing. I was living on a, I had a farm out in Elmer, Ontario, and I was, I was actually in Brantford. Uh, how'd you get your grow, your grow license? Oh, I, I got, went to my doctor <coughs> and, uh. And uh, he he was trying to give me painkillers like Percocets and things like that, yeah. so I don't do those kind of drugs. So I said, right. well, you know, I'd mentioned how about cannabis, and he said, well, that's probably something that would be really good for you, and it's not addictive. So I already been smoking, obviously, but yeah. uh, you know, I I played it off as a, as though I hadn't, and then uh, so he filled out my paperwork, mm -hmm. and it was funny because I got I got my grow license in the mail on the Monday, and I was like, this is like too good to be true. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and then on the Friday, I got my firearms license because I had done a firearms course, and so they all they they both showed up in the same week. So I got a license to have weed and a license to have guns, which is okay. Pretty, so pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what country we live in. <clears throat> yeah, considering yeah. And then in 2013, uh, I got a letter while I was in Brantford, and I got a letter in the mail, and uh, so my my babysitter, the lady who was watching my kids, she's a nice Amish lady. She called me and said, you have mail here. Could you please come pick it up? So I said, yeah, no problem. And she, the snow was so deep at my place. It was six feet deep down in Elmer, Ontario at the time. So I couldn't even stay there because I couldn't yeah. shovel the snow. But uh, anyways, I uh, I showed up to her house and I picked up my mail. And she kind of handed me the mail and then closed the door in my face. And I was like thinking, like, this lady's never like, she's super nice. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. So whatever, I put the mail in my car, <coughs> kind of weird out by it, Dro drove back to Brantford, Ontario, got back and then I, I was looking through my mail and there was uh, there was a piece of paper in there, and or a big envelope, and it said right on the front of it, medical marijuana access regulations, Kyle Alexander Morrison, my address and whatever yeah. else. So I was like, what the, f what the fuck is this? Because usually they send it all in like, you know, a, a yellow envelope and it says confidential and it doesn't say anything about marijuana on it because you right you know, you're not supposed to give away your medical privacy but for some reason this came in like that and i was really stunned by it so i i opened it up and it was a letter from i believe it was health canada it was saying that i i had to like tear down my grow up take all my weed that was drying curing in storage like even the stuff i was smoking yeah. chop it up mix it with cat litter and water and then throw it out with the garbage and then I had to buy from a licensed producer like Tilray yeah. or Tweed or one of these new outfits. And I'm like, wow. this is I'm like, so this is this is crazy. Like this isn't something that could could uh, be real. Like throw it out. Like the way that they wrote it, it was just like ridiculous. And the fact that it came marked, yeah, what it was. So I went online and I'm like, you know, this is this for real or is this some hoax? Like what's going on? And we said, yeah, it's totally for real. We all got one. Uh, we're forming a group. Uh, if you look online, it's a coalition against repeal with a guy named Jason Wilcox. So I went online, but the first video I got was this guy, Justin Loizos, and he uh, he had MS, and and 
and he was growing and the man was in tears because like his entire life like, you know he's bound to a wheelchair his whole life was his grow up yeah and uh you know what i mean i'm watching this video and i'm like well i got his information and i was i was crying myself to see this guy and like they're taking away from him and i thought you know what I'm not gonna let it happen i'm gonna help out yeah. do this with this group and we ended up uh, beating the federal government in court where the court case known as the Aller trial and that's why uh, everybody in Canada is allowed to grow four plants. It was directly because of that that court case. Wow. Without that, none of us would have ever got a chance to. I think we talked about this yeah, before. Yeah, but, yeah, we talked about this before. Um, yeah. And then we were probably drinking and... Yeah, we were, just, <laughs> yeah, we were drinking. We had, a, we had a rap show that sh that night at my first shop, Stigma. Yeah. But yeah, ever since then, I've just been right into the activism. Right now, I'm, uh, my form of activism is um, civil disobedience by running uh, an illegal uh, pot shop. Yeah. Well, no, four illegal pot shops. And, um, you know, it's been really crazy. I created a lot of jobs, you know. So as far as activism, activism now paying off in right. for creating jobs and, you know, living a better quality of life. So, Yeah, like uh, I remember like when I first started doing videos and music and all that stuff like that and smoking in, in, in the videos and stuff like that when it was like kind of like, like that wasn't... Uh, like a thing like a, like a lot of people were doing like obviously like big people like Snoop and Cypress and stuff like that were but like <coughs> but, now, but now it's almost like you know I, I smoke on this interview but sometimes it's like like hip hop like, and like, cannabis like, go like, hand like, in hand it's almost like kind of like uh the people that really love it now are, are but like before it was kind of just a cool thing to do like, for some people, it was just a cool thing to do, but I think, it, like, now it's to the point where it's, like, if you really love it, you just do it. It's, it's not, like, a... And it's completely like, mainstream now, too. It's not, like, that cool factor, you know, anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so you got the the four legal spots. <laughs> um, <coughs> oh, 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 what do you think about um, some of these government-run ones? Um, I heard they, they just opened, and, uh, well, uh, well here, here's a guy that I know I went to them, and he said the stuff was very dry. Mm -hmm. It was just, like, like crumble like you take it out of the thing and it just, it just crumbles and then i seen another like article which um said like one of the things had like a, a, a bug in the bud yep yeah yeah well you know they're kind of scrambling because like this is all new this is a brand new emerging you know market right when and, and they're trying to come in and take our our brick and mortar shops and they're all they're doing is stealing what we've already done they're not creating yeah. nothing new so right. like that's what i mean like i do something that's different yeah. you know and I think, you know, the less packaging, the better. As long as it's a sealed, you know, con container, receptacle. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to waste all that money and more plastic and, you know, it just creates problems and carbon footprints on the environment and shit like exactly, that. Exactly, so, exactly. So, you know what I mean? Like, cut down the packaging. Actually, if they really thought about it, like, uh, they could make, like, uh, hemp plastic. Yeah, they could make hemp plastic or even just a reusable yeah. sealed package. Like, there's, the, there's packaging or there's... A, a package you can buy from a place in Toronto called Cafe. And that's another illegal pot shop, probably one of the last ones in uh, in Ontario, like big pot shops. Yeah. And yeah, they 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 have a container and it, it's like a, it's got like a big Ziploc thing on the front, but it locks in on the side. So now it's a lock container. So then you need a warrant to open it, and it's non-transparent, so you can't see in it. So if you're carrying that with you and the cops, you know, fuck yeah. with you, then you can, you know, be like, oh, it has a locked thing, and if you open that now, you're, you know. You're yeah, opening exactly. up a, a locked package and, and that's illegal and you can't do that, you know, and so it's it, there's all kinds of like little things that, you know, keep the black market on the rise. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So now like um, uh, before, like, um, like, let's say you were driving, you got, got caught um, with weed or being high or whatever like that. It was just like what, like a, um, like a fine? And, and uh, is it like now that now it's legal? I think it's like no. I know I got I got charged. I got, not, not now it's like a DUI. Yeah, I got charged. I got charged before for having weed while driving, yeah. and it was more of a possession charge. Now okay. they, they you know they call this legalization, but the charges are, are a lot stiffer. And I mean like yeah they they can um, take your license away for a certain amount of time, or you have to go back on track, or whatever the deal is now with cannabis. But honestly, they should just completely get rid of drinking and driving as well can't have smoke weed and drive then you shouldn't be able to drink and drive at all right you know what i mean make it fair yeah put a breathalyzer in every car in north america put a breathalyzer in every car that way there's no drinking and driving nobody can start a car without that 
that's the, the the Canadian law. The only one that you can you can bend but not break is drinking and driving because you can drink a little bit, but you go past that little point, snap it. I can't yeah. just hit you a little. I can't just take a little off you. Yeah. yeah, and it's like um, and it's like whatever people can handle too. Like like let's say like um, like I I, I smoke every day, like and I I smoke like a a, a, a small joint, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I know that I'm able to go out and do whatever right like but or even like with drinking or whatever like that so like i know i can have one beer and go but or how many however many beers and go but like i know myself but when i blow like when i blow over am i gonna blow over and they say oh you're intoxicated yeah you know yeah yeah no and like is you know the the, be- the best thing they could do would be to teach people about it like if i had learned about drinking and driving say I had, they had done the back on track class in school in high yeah. school and every student had to do it mandatory and actually teach them how to drink and drive properly like you can have one beer an hour for my weight and we can have two yeah. in the first hour and then i can have one beer every hour after on the hour but after i'm done my last beer i have to wait one hour and then i can drive mm-hmm. i can i could blow through my breathalyzer that i had in my car because i did get caught drinking and driving right mm-hmm. Yeah, well, even, like, uh, if they teach you in school, like, um, there's a lot of things... On, they, on cannabis, too, like... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things they, they should teach you in school, like, uh, I never learned about taxes in exactly, school. Exactly, 100% taxes. Why, why don't they teach you to do your taxes? Because you exactly. wouldn't pay your taxes if you learned about what was really going on. <laughs> right? right? Right. And exactly if they taught you more about, like, uh, even different drugs that are out there, you know, like, um, like what, what, what they do to your body, what they do long-term, what they do, uh, the, the pros and the cons... Mm-hmm. Yeah, they should definitely teach us a lot more than they teach us. It's just basically, I think that they use a lot of things as distractions, you know, like uh, sports and, you know, music for me is not really a distraction. Music I can listen to while doing other things. Yeah. But I can't watch a game and do other things. Maybe I could cook some dinner or something, like, but I might burn the dinner, you know what I mean? Like, that's like the, you right. know what I mean? So, I mean, like, man. So, what is your preferred, like, um, like we're, we're smoking a joint right now, but like, uh, do you like joints, bongs? Pipes. Oh, uh, I'm all about dabs. My, dabs. My nickname's Dab Farmer, so I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I go yeah. right from the beginning to the end. I start with the seed. I grow it all the way to the end. I process it into shatter, and then I smoke that shatter, or even retail that shatter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I go from A all the way from A to B. As far as saying, so I mean, Dab Farmer is my nickname. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the dabbing is a little bit much for me. I remember, like, uh, well, like first time, I didn't know how much I was doing guy's like he's like oh here i i i got you one you got me a big glob and i was in this um spot in toronto you can you can smoke in this was like years ago one of them oh vapor over. central i think it was one of, yeah was it upstairs yeah yeah vapor central yeah and they had the comedians in there and stuff like that and you can smoke in there and uh i remember like i coughed so hard that like i seen the stars and like everybody's like at the table's like laughing at me i'm like like oh shit I'm like I'm like so like I rushed to like their little area everybody thought I was gonna be like I'm like I'm like water <laughs> water this guy gave me like a, a huge dab so like I think you really gotta watch out with like that and what do you think about like uh, edibles edibles well me myself like I love edibles but they really mess me up they're uh, yeah they're pretty messed up uh, I eat them and then automatically I get I get paranoid. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So um, I I feel the same way. I I I feel the same way about the uh, edibles. I'm not really too big into them. Maybe like the odd time if I'm not doing anything, if I don't gotta leave the, where I'm at, and like I can just like chill. I got a funny story about it. They're are, they're all right. I did a... But um, as far as, like, yeah, just normal, like, I remember, like, I had a little tiny muffin one night, ruined my night. Yeah. Um, where we were out with, like, um, a couple of buddies and, like, a bunch of girls, and I was just trying to, like, uh, like I couldn't even talk. Like, I was, like, I ended up, like, I'm, like, I'm going home. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you really got to watch the edibles. Like, uh, but I'm not, like, I'm not too big on them, but every once in a while, if I'm in the right mood, you know. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, the glass filters? But I'm, I don't, I, they're okay. I, I like to go with my old school original paper filter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a few glass filters. I have a this one thing. It's got like a mustache on it, built onto it. It's a joint smoker, and you hold it. It looks like you have a mustache. Yeah. You know, that's pretty cool, uh, that's, too. That's cool. I, I just prefer paper filters. They yeah. work good. 
That was pretty cool, like, uh, set up thing you had, like, uh, your paper there, and you had the thing for the filters on the end, yep. and you had the little tray. Yeah, that's a whole little ready-to-go kit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think, uh, yeah, there's so many different ways of smoking now, like, um, yeah, I, I prefer, I prefer joints, definitely. Um, wh what's your, uh, what's your favorite papers? I'd say, what's your top three? Uh, my favorite papers are DLX, uh, the thins, the, uh, elements thins, and raw thins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm like uh, I tried a bunch, a bunch of different ones, but uh, like I don't know, I just keep on going back to zigzags. I don't know. Original zigzags. Original Light zigzags. Pack. Yeah. Yeah, you know I use them, but for me, I need a little bit longer because I roll like every joint. I only put one paper on it because when you overlap paper and shit, that's a little bit harsher and chatters yeah. your throat. So yeah. I only try, I try to get as much into one paper, you know, and 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 not have that's it, uh, you know burning up my throat because the more yeah. my throat's messed up, the less I'm gonna smoke during the day. Right. And I prefer right, right. smoke all day long. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it is my in my chosen medicine. Like I, I choose cannabis over everything. I don't um, really, really like any other drugs. I think drugs I, don't come from a pharmacy. Like me personally, I don't know about you, but like I, I see like hash around like less. And like I kind of like uh I like kind of like high it gives you because like I don't know uh, you know when you smoke dabs you get a different kind of like high when you smoke flour you get a different kind of high. Like it's funny you say that. Because we have a, a lot of different um, choices on hashish over at uh, my shop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come over there and, and yeah, because like uh, I got this one. It's old school black. The old school black one that used to be around in the nineties. Okay. Tell you, like you have that with some coffee, man. It's, I I I turned back into a straight hash smoker for almost a month there. I was just smoking hash every day. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it's like a different taste, a different um, yeah, different vibe, really. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. So, uh, what do you think about in the states now? Like, um, in some in some states, it's like uh, can, like banned like completely, and in other states, it's like free run. Something we don't really know too much about here is it, is it, that's the, pretty much the same in Canada. We got Quebec. Quebec doesn't allow any of that stuff. Oh, I thought I thought we were all across the. Well, we you would think, right? Yeah. But apparently, Quebec has an issue with the the cannabis. They don't want it to be legal. Okay, Quebec always has something they yeah. want to fight what against they, the rest, what the rest they of the do, country. Against. What they do is whatever we want to do. They, they want they want to do the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So they just find the opposite and they do that. Quebec always has a problem with us. Like, right. You know, we just need to like shoot the fair one or something like that. You know, like <laughs> have like. <laughs> You know? It's the powers that be, you know what I mean? There's not much we can do about it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but as far as, like, America and, and their laws, well, I'm not allowed in America, so I don't really pay too much attention okay, to that. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't really watch anything, you know? I, I, I love Canada. I just try to stay up here. And if I'm going if I'm going to go south, I go right past America. Oh, yeah. 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 Right, right to usually Cuba. Yeah. So, uh... But as far as, like, the, they say something like the best weed is come from uh, California. I'm going to tell you right now, the best weed in, in the world comes from British Columbia. Yeah? Yeah, Vancouver Island specifically. Vancouver okay. Island, the Sunshine Coast, some of the other smaller Gulf Island, Island, Texada Island. So the best weed in Canada comes from there. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, but... I didn't know that. That's, but like, that's, curr that's currently... Well, well I, I knew, like, kind of, like, we were, like, I mean, um, British Columbia was, like, the best for Canada... The, but like, the, here's the thing, though. If, if you're going to talk about outdoor cannabis, good organic, natural outdoor cannabis yeah. in the in the ground, which a lot of people are confused about this. For yeah. me, I'm into old school, out in the ground, in soil, in the ground, for a few reasons. Right? When we're when we're growing indoor marijuana, the carbon footprint that it leaves on the planet, also with the use of electricity, that's it's just it's too much, and it's, right. it's not very cost effective. We we actually have the best climate. In the world, probably here in su in southern Ontario, we have an area called the Tobacco Belt, and it goes like from like Hagersville, maybe even further than Hagersville, all the way to like Point Pelee, and the best tobacco in the world is grown there, and it's because of the sandy loam, the the medium that it's grown in. Now, yeah. if we could grow these proper strains, ones that they're growing from like Humboldt County and stuff like that here in southern Ontario, we'd have the best weed and best organic natural weed in the world. It's just most of the growers okay. were in BC. Yeah. So everyone, when everybody knew that they could pretty much get away with growing weed, they moved to BC. 
Very similar to how people move to California. Right. Very similar. But the, the real deal is we're in the same line. We're actually more in the same line of where the Mencinino, California, and the Golden Triangle. or the, Yeah, the Golden Triangle, is that what they call it? Or the Green Triangle? I don't know. The Green tri- Triangle? Yeah. Um, Humboldt and, and that area there. We're right in line with that in southern Ontario. Which okay. means we, and for some reason, we grow the best tobacco, so that makes me believe that we could grow the best right. natural, organic, under the sun marijuana and have less of a carbon footprint. Now, the, the, if people want to get higher and they want to get to that next level, well, you just turn it into a concentrate because then it doesn't matter. The whole idea of having to grow it indoor is, is, is a facade. Okay, let's speak more about that because, like, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, like, so if you're going to put it into a concentrate, like a, a dab form. Like, uh, you, you bring it down to that level, um, you do the same kind of um, THC percentages and all that? Well, yeah, because you're extracting just the raw ingredients. You could you could refine it down to being, uh, one, like, close to 100% pure THC. Okay. Distillate. But uh, in, a, in a flower form, like, um... Well, uh, something that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually get more terpenes on outdoor marijuana than you could ever achieve indoor. Okay. Yeah, so it means you're getting more better flavored cannabis. It's just your drying and your curing techniques that really uh, you know, defines yeah. how the, that's going to turn out. I've seen uh, outdoor marijuana that had one of the best growers in, can- in Canada tell me he thought my weed was fucking indoor. He's like, no way. I said, yeah. He's like, that's some of the best uh, indoor um, weed from I've ever seen from Ontario. He's like, it's better than the stuff I grew back in the day. I was like, that's, it. that's outdoor. He's like, no way. It's all about your drying. You're curing. Okay, so like, uh, do you cure like, like longer or? Uh, what I do is I do a cold cure, so it cures them over more time. So you have circulating air, and then air conditioners running. Okay. Right. That's yeah. See, there's so much to know, like about like, n- like like some people just be like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna grow some weed and try to get some. It's all about the cure. Yeah. Yeah, nothing else in the, in growing matters. The cure, right? What brings down? You get a joint with a white ash like this one. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know it's been dried and cured. Now this is indoor weed. I'm saying right now we could grow all marijuana outdoor. Yeah. And the thing about growing outdoor also is, like hemp and cannabis leach yeah. toxic shit out of the out of the soil. They eat that shit. So. You could actually make this planet better by growing all weed outdoors. Well, even for like, I remember like, uh, like when I was like a kid, when I was small, like high school and shit like that. Like there'd be like seasons, like a lot, a lot more people did it outdoor back, back, back then, right? Yeah. And like, you, you know, like certain times of the year, like you get like a really good weed, and then like other times it'd be like all that, all that stuff starting to run out. And well, that's what I mean. Like if you did it properly, you yeah. just turn on the extracts. And you can just, it doesn't matter if it's not really that good or whatever, it's still what it is, and you can okay, find yeah, it to 100%. Yeah. yeah. It just it just doesn't make any sense to me to even grow my own indoors. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's like, I love hydro, don't get me wrong, but I, I do believe we could grow the best weed here if we just, if we just got more people into the, in tune that we have some of the best growing mediums in the world right here in Canada, right here in Ontario. That's awesome. So like, uh, with the most sunlight as well. Mm-hmm. Like some of these summers we get down here in southern Ontario, are pretty hot. It's a good thing for when you grow marijuana. Right. Yeah. yeah and like, uh, the weather here is, what? It's just changing. Eh? Like, uh, I mean, like I, I remember, like, like when I was a kid, I used to be like um, GT down like the hills and shit like that. And now, like, it snows once and it's like gone. Like next day, like kids can't do that shit no more. Like, um, but yeah, it's. So definitely that affects all the, like all the growing and shit too, right? Um, as these climates change and shit like that. Yeah, but um, yeah. So um, yo, I'm high as fuck. Yeah, I'm high and, as fuck. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna wrap this up. All right, have a good yeah. day. Thanks a lot. Yeah, man. Good talk. Good. Uh, like I didn't know. Like I, I learned a lot. Like um, I'm just a you know regular smoker. I don't look too far into it but yeah yeah I'm pre- it's pretty much my life so yeah it has been for a while 
I mean, I I, I appreciate it. I, I smoke it every day, but it's like I smoke it and then I think of other shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming over. Thanks for uh, doing the show. And this is uh, AGTV, Kyle Morrison.